All right, welcome back guys. In the last video, we saw how to create our custom user model and then we migrated it to our user database. Now in this video, we're gonna create our listing model and then we're gonna migrate that to our listing database. So let's go ahead and get started on that. First of all, I'm gonna open up my listing models.py and this is where we're gonna go ahead and work and create that listing model. So one thing to note, I have my database running. I also have my backend running. So make sure you're doing the same. Then I'm gonna close that up, close up that side window and start working on this. All right, so I'm gonna create a class of listing. And then this is going to inherit my models.model. And then we're gonna have a couple fields here. So remember, we're gonna have that realtor field. This is gonna be my models.email field. And I'm gonna have a max length of 255. So this field right here is what's gonna allow this listing to link to my realtor that made the listing itself. So again, we can't have that foreign key relationship because this listing is gonna be in that listing database and then the realtor is gonna be stored in the user database. So we cannot have cross database relationships with the foreign key or many to many field. So this is how we have to do it. And after that, these listings are gonna have a title. It's gonna be models.character field. I'm gonna have a max length of 255 and then I'm gonna have a slug. So this is gonna be the unique identifier for this listing model. It's gonna be models.slug field. And then I'm gonna set unique to be true. That way these slugs have to be unique. And then I'm gonna have a couple more fields that are gonna be a character field. And I'm also gonna have a max length of 255. So I'm just gonna copy this models.character field. And then below here, I'm gonna have the address. This is gonna be a character field. I'm gonna have the city, which is also gonna be a character field. I'm gonna have a state, which is gonna be a character field gonna have a zip code which is also gonna be a character field but for this one I'll do something like 20 just because zip codes are shorter and then I'm gonna have a description which in this case I'm gonna do a models.text field just because the descriptions are gonna be a lot longer so a text field fits better with this and then I'm going to have a price which is gonna be a models.integer field so that's the way I'm gonna be treating these prices they're gonna be integers then I'm gonna have bedrooms which is gonna be a models.integer field as well. Then I'm gonna have bathrooms, which is gonna be a models.decimal field. And the reason why it's gonna be a decimal field is because you can have things like two and a half bathrooms and stuff like that. So it makes sense to have a decimal field here. Then I'm gonna have the max digits, which I'm gonna to set to two. And then decimal places, it's gonna be one. So what this means is the max digits is the maximum amount of digits. So if I had 3.2, this would be considered two digits. And then decimal places one, it's gonna be this right here. So max digits two doesn't mean something like this. This right here is not the max digits. The overall number with the decimal place is the max digits. And then after bathrooms, I'm gonna have sale type. So for the sale type, we're gonna have this either be for sale or for rent. So here we're gonna have a choice. So it's gonna be a models.character field. And then a way that we can have choices is by creating another class in here. So I'm gonna create a class, which is gonna be sale type. And here I'm gonna pass models dot text choices. So that's what it's gonna inherit. Then I'm gonna have for sale, which is gonna be for sale. And then for rent is gonna be for rent. And then what I can do from here is I can pass a max length to this and I'll do something like 50. Actually, no, let's do a little less, something like 10, just because these right here aren't very long. And then I'm gonna pass this choices property. Then I'm gonna do sale type dot choices. And then I'm gonna set a default to this, which is gonna be sale type dot for sale. So by default, we're gonna have the sale type be for sale. And then after that, we're gonna have a home type. So this is gonna be either a house, a condo, or a townhouse. And again, this is gonna be a choice type of field. So to make this easier, I'm gonna do a shift option down key to copy this down a line. I'm gonna make this one a home type. And then we're gonna make a new text choices. So this is gonna be a class of home type. It's gonna inherit from models.text choices. And then for our choices, we're gonna have house, which is gonna be house. We're gonna have condo, which is gonna be condo. And then townhouse, which is gonna be townhouse. So these are our choices. So now I'm gonna grab this home type. That's what I'm gonna pass to this choices. So my choices is gonna be home type dot choices. Then for my default, I'm gonna do home type dot house. And then after this, I'm gonna deal with my images. So I'm gonna have a main photo. And then that pillow package is what allows us to work with these images. It's gonna be a models dot image field. And then this is gonna have an upload to property. And then I'm gonna upload to listings slash. So when we create images, these are gonna go in that media folder. 
And then that media folder, if we take a look at our core settings.py, we define these media settings down here. And then this media folder is going to be placed inside of the base directory, which is going to be this listings directory, and then in a folder called media. And then inside of this media folder, we're going to have this listings folder where we're going to place this main photo. So that's the way this is going to work. And then I'm going to have three more photos because we're going to have a main photo, which will be a sort of exterior photo. And then we're going to have three interior photos. So I'm going to copy this down three times because we're going to have quite a few photos. I'm going to select this main underscore part, command D twice, remove. And then I'm going to have photo one. I'm going to have photo two. And I'm going to have photo three. So again, these are all going to be image fields and they're going to upload to the exact same folder. Then after that, I'm going to have that is published property. So is published which is going to be a Boolean field. So models Boolean field. And then the default for this is going to be false. So by default, they're not going to be published. And then finally, I'm going to have one final property, which is going to be date created. And this is going to be a models dot date time field. And this is going to have a default value. And then for this default value, what I'm going to do to help me out with this is I'm going to bring in an import. So from Django dot utils dot time zone, I'm going to import now. And this is going to help me get the current date. So this now is what I'm going to pass to this default. And then finally, I'm going to have the string representation of this model. So I'm going to define this double underscore str double underscore pass in self. And then I'm going to return self dot title as the string representation of this model. So there we are. We have our model now in place. So our next step is going to be to migrate this to our listing database. So in order to migrate this to our listing database, we need to create a router just like we did with our user. So inside of my user app, we created this router and then this router helped us make these migrations properly with things like this allow migrate. And then these other functions also helped us with other things like reading and writing and also setting up the relationships between models in that database. So we're going to do the same sort of thing now. So inside of my listing, I'm going to create a file, which I'm going to call router.py. And then here I'm going to create that listing router. So listing router. So if you remember in the overview, this is something I went over and then this listing router, it's going to be very similar to what we were doing in our user router. So again, I'm going to have that route app labels and here I'm going to have listing. So this listing is going to be this listing app. And then below I'm going to define those functions just like I was doing previously. And then also one thing I'm going to quickly do is go to my settings. I'm going to find that one setting that I have, which is my database router setting. So here we passed in the user router, which helped us route things to the user database. And now here in this list, I'm also going to pass this new router I just made. So in terms of how you can structure the files for these routers, you can also have something like one file that has all of these different routers inside of it, but I'm just going to have the routers in a file inside of each of these apps. I think that's a nice way to organize this. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So now the path to this is going to be listing dot router dot listing router, which is the name of that class. So I can save that. And now I can start working on this listing router. So I'm going to close up that side window and let's define some of these functions. So I'm going to define the DB for read, and then I'm going to pass itself model and then my keyword argument of hints. And then again, this is going to make attempts to read the listing models, go to the listing database. So the way we do that is with the if model dot underscore meta dot app label in self dot route app labels, then I'm going to return my listings. Otherwise, I'm going to return none. So again, this listings, if we go to the settings, it's this database here, this is the listings. So we're going to read from this database when we're referring to the listing model, and then also any other model that you would define inside of this listing app. But in our case, we only have this listing model that we defined, but you can also define more models inside of here. Then I'm also going to define my right. So DB for right pass itself model, and then my keyword argument of hints. And then this is going to have the exact same logic as right here. So any writes that we do with the listing model, will go to the listing database. And then our listing database is defined as this right here. And then the next thing we're going to do is define allow relation pass itself object one object two, and then my keyword argument of hints. And then this is going to allow relations between models in the listing app. And these relations are going to happen in the listing database. So if I were to define other models inside of here, I can have relations between them like foreign keys, many to many keys and so forth. But of course, with cross database relations, you can't have this. 
So this in particular is just going to allow those relations, but we do only technically have just one model that we define in here, but I'm going to create this anyway. So I'm going to have object one dot underscore meta dot app label in self dot route app labels or and then I'm going to have object two. So I'm going to copy this or I'm going to have object two dot meta app label in self dot route labels. And then if this is the case, we're going to return true, which is going to allow the relations to happen because the model is inside of our listing app. And then otherwise, I'm going to return none. And then finally, I'm going to define my allow migrate pass and self db app label model name equal to none and then my keyword argument of hints. So this right here is gonna make it so that when we do our migrate, it's gonna to migrate to our listing database. So I can do an if app label in self dot route app labels, then we're gonna return db equal to listings. So if this checks out, then we're going to migrate to our listing database. Otherwise I'm gonna return none. So there we are. Now we have our listing router in place. So now we have our logic so that all the logic that deals with the database in our listing app will be routed to our listing database. So perfect. Now our next step is going to be to migrate these changes. So I'm going to stop running my server. I'm going to clear up this terminal. And then I'm going to do a Python manage.py migrate. And then I'm going to pass in the name of this app, which is listing. And then I need to specify the database that I'm going to migrate to. So I'm going to do this double hyphen database equals listings because that's the name of the database itself in our settings.py how we defined it right here. So we're going to migrate to this database, then you're going to click enter. And of course, I also need to make my migration. So let's do that first. So Python manage.py make migrations. And then after that, I'm going to do this migrate. And there we are. So now it applied these migrations. So now if I open up this PostgreSQL shell, so I'm going to double click here. And let's go analyze this listing database. So if I list out my databases, previously we were analyzing this listings users. Now we're going to analyze this listings listings. So I'm going to connect to this database with listings, or I guess backslash C, then listings listings, which is the name of the database, put a semicolon. So now I'm connected to it. Then I can do a backslash DT. And then here I can see the different migrations that were made to this. And then in particular, we see this listing listing. And then this listing listing is where our listing data is going to be stored whenever we create a new listing. So the way we can think about it is our model is just a blueprint. And then that blueprint lets us create our data in this database, which is going to be stored right in here. And then we can even do something like a select star from listing underscore listing. And then here you can see all that different data that's involved with a listing. So we have the ID, the realtor, title, slug, address, and so forth, all the way down to the date created. So all of these fields are going to be populated in this table. So I can press Q to exit out of this, do a backslash Q to exit from this shell. And there we go. Now we see how this works. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So we created our listing model, we created our listing router, and then we migrated our listing model to our listing database. And then in our next video, we're going to start dealing with our user based views because we need a way to register an account, retrieve our user, and then we're going to test out everything related to our authentication in that next video. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, please hit that like button. It goes a long way to help a channel like mine grow and get recognized so others can benefit from the videos I release as well. Also, I have links in the description that you can check out. I have one for an e-commerce course that you can check out if you're interested in learning to develop an application like that. I also have a link for joining my Web Development Kings Facebook group. That way, if you want to personally ask me something, then you can go right ahead and do that and I'll happily help you out. Only questions I probably won't answer are if you want me to help you build some kind of personal project as I don't quite have the time for that sort of thing, but anything else is fair game. You can also post something in the group itself. That way other developers in the group can also help you out with something as well. Their group is all about growing your expertise as a developer. So if you're interested in that, then go ahead and click that link in the description and join the family. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notification bells. That way you don't miss out when I release a new video and I'll see you in the next one.